Hello everyone, this is the second horse of the New York Clinic. Um, the owner is Tara, the horse is Mojave. He is a six-year-old gelding from Centennial. I think it's in Nevada or Utah, honestly, I'm not really sure. He's from the Centennial HMA. He is very food motivated. He's willing but super guarded on the ground, defenses to kick, particularly with increased pressure. There is a fine line between kicking and striking and attempting to run through a panel. Um, and the goals for today are how to manage the kicking defensiveness, improve groundwork, respect, and desensitizing, working towards a farrier visit. So you'll basically see me, I guess, analyze the horse and read the certain cues on the horse that are being ignored. I break it down to very small basics for this guy. The second he even leans, so he gets less sticky, mm -hmm. try to loosen up and get a few inches of black in the rope before you pull forward again. Okay. How does he do... With just rubbing a stick on him, on his neck. On good, his yeah, good with that. How about sending with the stick? Um, he's better with the rope. Okay. Stick, when it's more pressure like that, is when he gets more panicked. And okay, so. That's what kind of panels the first time. So. <laughs> Let me vary. Just rub him with the stick. So my go-tos are, and I saw you yielding his hindquarters a little bit, but it's the hindquarters, I start sending them and then desensitizing a lot. So I'll take, can, like, can you toss, after you do the, the stick, just a question, can you toss that rope over his neck? Yeah, In yeah, we've been working on that. Okay, and how about the back? Yeah, that one is where he gets more guarded, and like the further back you go, before. Because I've been able to brush him and stuff. But we're getting better, he just gets... Now, I want you to pay attention, too, when you're rubbing him. Watch his facial cues. If he's nervous with the hind end, watch and rub that one spot. The second he shows, like, just, like, 1% more of being uncomfortable and rub until he relaxes in that area and then release. Don't just keep going back. Okay. That way you can acknowledge and recognize him. Yeah, so right there, just rub until there's a little softness. Go. So it goes back to what I was explaining with the other one, but the other one didn't really need to like practice, where first you wait until their feet are still to release and they're not really like reactive, but then you want to wait until they relax. That way they're getting rewarded for when they're calm throughout it. Good, and try the other side now. So even right there. Because I find if you look at those really like subtle dis differences, they're going to catch on quicker okay. and be more comfortable sooner. That makes sense. Because what they want is just to be like acknowledged and heard when they are feeling uncomfortable. <coughs> There's a spot. And so there's like another little like subcategory between relaxation and um, freezing. So there's freezing and then there's the relaxation where he kind of got distracted by an external source and stopped paying attention a little to what you were doing, which shows that he's more comfortable with that than the external source. Okay. So you release for that and then you want the true relaxation. So he's kind of in that, that sub area. Yeah. Like there I would release. Good. And that was pretty good. That was like that total drop yeah. of the head with the shoe. Nice, because you were able to acknowledge a little more. I love your training partners. <laughs> they got it all the lives. Good. Yeah. And then release. And then go ahead, just walk him around. Give him a break from that for a second. Let's just see him lead a little. And then we'll look at the Sunday. And I think I also want to do pull releases with him, too. Yeah, so his face is definitely, like, I still have to keep another halter on him to get a different halter on him. Okay. And when the halter is on, can you rub his face and, like, up over his neck? And if you force it to happen. Watch, Kitty. Not with me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kitty. <laughs> Is it going to be okay if I try to 
Yeah, yeah. You're good. <laughs> Yeah, what is what's going on? <laughs> and now just standing next to him, there's a little exercise I want you to do. So stand next to him as if you're leading him, like okay. from like kind of the shoulder area. <laughs> He's like, no. And relax your lead rope. You don't have to try to get him to stop. If he backs up, that's fine. Okay. Now take a step to your left. Good. And then you don't have to keep moving. Okay. And then just pat him a little for that. Good. And then take another step to your left. Good. And just take one step. Oh, okay. Don't keep walking. Don't You're keep good. Going. You're good. Go ahead, take another step that way. Good, now take a step to your right. Good. So, and that's without pulling on the rope at all. So what we're doing, and I like to do it, the ones that have problems with this, most things are super in tune, especially at the end of the stage. Yeah, well, no, not necessarily. It's the ones that are more domestic because people tend to ignore the cues and them communicating to us, they're more dull. So like if we take a step this way, their head just stays straight and they're kind of not tuned in. Him, you can take a step like this and his ear is going to twitch or his nose is going to move half an inch. So that's something that you want to try to hold on to throughout his whole training. Okay. And that comes from all of the little acknowledgements. Okay. Uh, but I like to do that as a test. And that's good to do with, again, the domestic horses to see are they actually in tune with you. Take a step to your left, see if some part of their body moves. Usually it'll be in their head that they indicate that. Okay. And then to their right. And like I just like to acknowledge when they are paying attention and reward it for that. Right. Okay, so let's go into your sending okay. position. And if you want the carriage stick too, I can give you that. And now don't just lunge, but you're going to walk to the side with him. Okay. Like you're going to send him along the rail the whole way. Just kind of stay with him? Yeah, so I would walk, my sending position usually is my arm is out and I'm going to walk forward next to them. Okay. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Good, and then just drop your energy right where you're at and stand still. So exhale, drop your hand down, and just wait. Good, and then go up and pet him. So now we're getting him in tune with the releases on a small scale. Good, go ahead, send him again. Same Yeah. because it is just doing the small things to build their confidence. Yeah. We don't want him to get reactive. Of course, we want to be able to increase the pressure and have them be okay with it. Right. So lengthen your line there and make some energy with the stick. You can okay. kind of wave it out of side. Don't hold so close to the head. Okay. There we go. Yeah, even if he like sends out and goes out and isn't necessarily like sending, Right. Or just lunging, that's fine. That's spicy Good boy. Good, and drop and reward for that. Good, walk up and cut him. Good man. Nice. 
let him go a little longer this time. So the first time when he did let me go out, I liked that you were able to release after just one or two steps because the goal is to get him to move the shoulder and the ribs out to step. It's not necessarily holding the circle quite yet. Good. Very nice. Okay, and then let me just watch you. You can drop the stack and then you can work on touching his head. So I kind of want to see you touch all the parts where the halter lay. Okay. It's more fun. Yeah. Feel better. Eventually, there's a few times he'll like throws it up too high. I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh my god, can't. <laughs> but we have that song. You're gonna be really good today, aren't you? <laughs> He's like, I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so then with your lead rope, I want you to grab kind of like just right below the clip, and then add pressure down and wiggle back and forth slowly with that steady pressure. You might need to add a little more. We're just trying to get him to drop his head. Good, please. He did. Really? So what I do to see this, because sometimes I struggle too, I have a point in the distance that I'm watching his ears okay. right now to see if they're lowering beneath it. So there was a drop. Okay. Yeah, and then when you raise, well. make sure when, you, when he does drop, release your hand from it completely. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, ask again. Good. That was better. That's more obvious. Yes. <laughs> yes. So these are called pull releases, and it's getting the horse to soften through the top line. The goal is to get the pull lower than the withers. That's where they can kind of stretch out the top. It releases endorphins sometimes and really gets them to relax. So if we can teach them the pull release, we can add that to different exercises or stressors in his life. So for example, if he has a problem with the pole being touched, um, and there's a different way to do the pole release that relates to that, but for the even more sensitive horses like him, if we introduce it with the lead rope, we can show him like, if I'm touching the cheek, I want the head to drop and release. Okay. And you keep adding a cue. It really, it's like kind of how you do trick training or really any type of training. Yeah. You would start with the cue you want it to be, so that would be you touching the pole, Okay. And then if he doesn't do it, show him the answer of good through the way that he knows, which would be the lead row. So then eventually every time you touch up there or anywhere on his body, he goes into that release. No, okay, look, that is one of the challenges we still have that in my mind. Like, well, over time we'll get better, but getting a halter on him, like I could just switch him um, So like, would you be able to halter him in here? Um, we'd probably move around the whole round to do it, but yes. <laughs> Usually we take, so it's a lot easier in a stall where he doesn't have much space to move. Right. Um, but like, I still keep the breakaway halter on him outside because I wouldn't be able to get him otherwise. Right. And then I have to put this halter over that and, and then, then take, take the other one off. Yeah. And he's okay with the other one being taken off underneath it? And... Um, yeah, that part he's patient about. Where he gets nervous is... Good. Cool. And then I would take a step back from him because he offered more. Good. Come here. He's like, that's what you want. Yeah. Just give me space for it. Yeah. Good. Um, okay, so I think I want to have you unhalter him, but first let's do some of the high energy stuff, and then we'll end with the following the steps and getting the halter on and working on that release with it and halter on. Okay. So let's go to the rope tossing over him. Start with the guest Yeah, however you normally would work on that. Do you normally use like a, a carrot stick with a line on it to snake them or do you prefer the rope? You can. Usually the carrot stick, it depends whatever tool is easier in my hand on that day. Mm -hmm. This horse isn't as good with the Oh yeah, she did say that. You yeah. see that as pressure right. and then that goes to breaking it down to smaller steps then the stick introduction is separate from the tossing introduction yeah because the rope is better but um i guess typically i would use the carrot stick if one didn't have a halter on yet so gotcha. like in that first mustang session if i had him and he was moving a lot and didn't want to square up at all i would start with just holding the stick and tossing it in the center if he was running around and waiting for him to settle getting closer kind of like i did with the halter where mm -hmm. i moved it got closer, moved it again, 
Um, similar with the carrot stick, I would move it, get closer, and then eventually start tossing it over him, just really relaxed, no energy. And then uh, that would turn into the carrot stick as opposed to the rope, which then helps set me up for that going over the neck for the halter. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess usually I'll use the carrot stick, and I don't really work with them. I work with carriage or carrot sticks. I work with carriage whips and lunge whips because mm -hmm. they're lighter weight in my hand. So if yeah. I'm doing it for 30, 40 minutes, <laughs> my wrist isn't going to break. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Yeah. Build new muscles. <laughs> And I liked that when he was moving with you doing that, you didn't immediately shut it down. You gave him that space to move his feet. Because eventually you do want to have... <laughs> Sorry, that's desensitized in motion. This Four is times. why I like whips. <laughs> 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 He's like, well, geez. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. One of the biggest things we've been working on lately, too, is um, trying to get his feet which we're getting in progress with this front feet, back feet is still no go. Try to pick them up? Yeah. Can you, you can so rub them down. He needs a trim real bad. <laughs> you can rub them down with the stick? Yes, the back feet is where he gets more feet. Okay. Yeah, the front feet, he's gotten a lot better, but again, with me, he's doing great. Um, for instance, I had my husband try, and that's whenever it took a minute for him to realize like, oh, this is a new person, and it's now, still not gonna hurt. Are you picking him up with a rope? Um, no, I'm able to with my hands now. Okay. He's not great at it, not to the point he can't get trimmed just yet. So something that will help him too, since he's still kind of a little wary, of like when you're moving, he's so responsive to it. Yeah. Um, I would use a rope, that way you can eliminate you being so close to him, not only for yourself and safety there, prepping him for other people, but also for his comfort. Okay. Again, breaking it down into the little steps. First the leg gets picked up, he gets used to you being near him, and then you put it together. Okay. Um, so I would lead him by his feet. That will also help with his stickiness. Okay. So that's something I'm going to do by the feet. Okay. So we'll just get him good on this side, and then uh, I'll show you leading. We'll do leading with one hook, and then I really do want to have you go on yeah. the line to work on the haltering, so I just yeah. want to make sure we've got time for that. But I would say even if we don't have time for leading by the feet, that's fine. Well, that's it, just something it is a that's... good skill, and I don't think... Actually, you know what? We're going to do that with the hobbling one. So oh, yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure. He's so from the same place, too. Sticky. Huh? He's very sticky. Okay, so he's from the same place, they came at the same time. Okay. So They're like total opposite, opposite personalities. personalities. <laughs> What's that? Him and Steel, total opposite personalities. I don't think so. I no. think he's a little Steel bit more reactive. defensive in a aggressive way. No. Steel freezes the same way, though. Mm -hmm. And then walk him a little bit, because that was even a bigger release for him. Okay, go ahead, toss it over. He's older, too, right? <laughs> And when you've had other people interact with him, are they always asking him to do something? Um, not necessarily always. I've had people like just feed him. Okay. Or like when my dad was here visiting, yeah, he just gave him cookies and let him around with the dog. Like okay. a puppy dog. We don't want to pick his pen. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Like, and we don't ask anything of him. Right. right. We're just working around him. How, we, how was he with your dad? He wasn't bad. He was definitely, like, kept his distance at first, but near the end when he realized, okay, this person's not a threat, he was willing to be kind of more, like, in his bubble. Right. Which is good, because my dad has a very, he's not a horse person, so his presence is very <laughs> off-putting for most horses. <laughs> Good. So right now he's still at the feet still but not relaxed stage for the releasing there. So that's that's fine. That'll be one that you have to just keep working. Yeah, keep doing that and then start waiting for the release, the relaxation. So one day you might be doing that for like 10 minutes until the head drops or the eye softens or the ear doesn't twitch to you every single time. Okay. Would you consider this like a freeze almost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, because he knows that you don't want him to move his. So there's there's stationary desensitizing and in motion. In motion, he's not ready for quite yet. Yeah. So we start with stationary. Um, so he realizes that he's not supposed to move his feet. Mm -hmm. So he knows that's one of the answers, but he's not comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Right. So if he actually was expressing what he wanted to do, he would be moving. Right. But he's already learned to keep his feet still, so he is he's in that free state. Otherwise, you would see. The head would drop each time. Gotcha. There'd be licking and chewing after each time. The eye would soften. He's super expressive with his ears. Yeah. Um, whenever they're kind of holding that tension, and you can see he has that little bit of like the head bob to him mm -hmm. when he's nervous, that's going to be the freeze state. Okay. That's a little bit like on the edge of the freeze state versus just avoidance of what's happening right now. Gotcha. Where he's tipped this way. Right, so he wanted to give attention here for a second and wasn't as worried about the rope going over him. So that's the next step of coming out of the freeze stage. So I would release yeah, whenever he is starting. You don't want him to ignore you, yeah. but you do want to kind of acknowledge like, okay, this isn't his number one fear priority now. Now he's kind of fixated on something over here. We're going to take that away. Okay. Okay, do you want to try the altering thing now, or do you think yeah. there's another? Yeah, we can try that. Okay. Yeah, so just take it off. Yeah. <laughs> the exercise I was going to have you do, but he's not ready for yet, is the rope behind the hind end to get him to okay. turn. And the way to do that, too, with flighty horses that sometimes get out of that, because if you do it once or twice, they learn really quick, and they kind of avoid it, is then putting on long lines. So oh, if they yeah. turn one way too fast, it's going to hit them on the other hind end. Right. He's, yeah, he's not quite ready for that one. Yeah, swinging up, which I should really be swinging a rope around his legs, even. Yeah. That's like real funky. So just keep working on that, too. Okay. So I'm just assuming walk away. Yep. Okay. Y'all, buddy. He's like, mama. Mm. He's got a little, like, two inches of height behind the... Look at his picture. Right. <laughs> we got a little shorter. A little slow. So go ahead and approach him. Okay. And just rub him until the head drops or the eye softens or some sort of change happens. Good. So that's kind of softness there. Then you can release and take a step away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. And then again, because that was a little bit of an invite for you to come back in. And it'll help you, that's going to be one of the biggest things online to okay. do, teach him that full release for everything. So you okay. could even, with another halter on, rub him on the neck of the halter and your hand on the lead rope, get him to give, release both at the same time. Okay. So just teach that as his response. Okay. Instead of putting a head up. <laughs> right. And then teach him, yeah, when the head goes down, he gets the release. Okay. 
And normally you'd want to use the pull release to get their nose all the way to the ground. It's actually the first step to teaching the lay down. But for him, I want to teach it all the way to the ground because then that'll turn into an evasive behavior. We just want him to soften like two or three inches dropping. Okay. Good. See how the odd goes slower then? So then go back around to the other side. And then how do you usually halter? Do you toss it over or? No, I usually just like put the nose in and then. Like okay. The side. Perfect. Just go ahead and do it. But now hold it there. Don't keep approaching with it until he drops his nose. Good. Release. So even with the resistance there, you want him to soften into it. So the second you put it up, if he resists, hold it in that one spot until he drops down. And every time you do it, it'll get like faster and faster. Okay. You just have to acknowledge the discomfort. Good. Very good. Okay. So then put it back up again. Okay. So then there was another try from him that was the avoidance to the yeah. side instead of up. So I like that you waited. Nice. Okay. And then go a little further with it. Good. And then I would release and just walk away for a moment. Dragon's dance. Don't walk. Louis, why are you guys oh, trying yeah, to die today? Training cats. <laughs> they make them real great. Right. Now kids, how they? Louis, you don't want to get behind that one. He has kicky legs. So even that shy leg like, moved <laughs> kicky legs. Look how Yeah, so that you moved towards, but not necessarily advance the halter towards him, so that was good. Okay. Good. And then release right there. Nice. And then you can do your like kind of micro releases again where you just drop the halter and relax in place. You don't have to fully move away. I just like when they make a bigger step so when you've got the halter all the way up without him moving his head to give him a big release from that one. And then what I would do for tossing the rope over, separate it. So don't have the nose on when you toss the rope over. Oh, okay. So now let's work on the rope because the nose got better. I would remove, yeah, do it like the process you did with the rope. Okay. <laughs> and you can toss it a little further back on his neck, not so much near his ears right now. Okay. He's like, He's like hang on. <laughs> I don't like Too this. much energy. <laughs> this one changed it. How many times have you hit yourself in the head right. with the rope? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now maybe don't toss it all the way over, but just get it moving. Reach your hand under okay. and get it moving on that side. Good. See how there's even like a twitch of the head there? Yeah.
better be curious of other people, though. It's different for him. He's booped me a couple of times out yeah. in the field. Oh, good. Yeah. I always love hearing this story. What? Okay. Yeah, so go to tossing it over the neck again. And then we'll go through the, the stages of the nose and tossing over the neck. That was significantly better. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. And then let's go to the nose. <laughs> so now when he's in the paddock, because part of your problem might be, is it the approach at all in the paddock? Um, sometimes not always. Usually once you get up to him, it's good. Okay. But then, like, to go and get him, then he, that's when he's like, nope, just kidding. Okay. So then all of these steps are good for that part, but if you do have any problems with the approach, that's going to be matching the steps that I was talking about with that little bay. Okay. Where, like, as soon as he takes a step, you take one, and you're kind of tracking him. Okay. Now will just be micro releases, so stay near him. But you drop your hand, go. Pet him again. And then go to the nose. Good. Go ahead and hold for the nose. And then, yeah, wait for You might have to do like two or three acknowledgments of him softening that way. Okay. <laughs> I would just hold it there. Okay. Yeah, I would release one more time, or no. you release the nose one more okay. time. And then again with the nose. Good. And then start working on the tossing. Good. and then repeat your sequence. And this time, if you toss it over and his head stays still or even relaxes some, you can um, nod it. Okay. Good, that was pretty good. Nice. It looks like he stays fairly quiet for you to tie it. Yeah, that's part of my other issue. Like once it's nice. Cool. He's like, okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> cool, yeah. Good. So when you go to halter him, take the time like that. Okay. Don't just rely on the other halter being on him. And if you need to, do one or two more sessions like in here working on it. Okay. Um, just in case you want to build your confidence that way or if you feel pretty good about it. Leave him out without the halter on. Yeah. See what it is. Yeah. The one that's coming next? Yeah. Um, she wants more to touch. Okay. Yeah, I think she could. Oh, yeah, that's right. She could touch to his withers, but going any further back. So if they show that sign of being curious, that's another indicator that I can go further, which is why like I immediately went to petting his cheek. Okay. But if he had turned away there or shied, I would have waited in that spot until he acknowledged. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like, you're my new friend. <laughs> that's good though.
that step closer after we were standing still. Yeah. So avoidance right there, acknowledged. Sometimes if they get into that free state and I do want them to give, like I'll move my hand around a little. Okay. So I have some sort of draw. Okay. So even down to like the simplest things of like poking the lead rope on. Right. And it won't pain. have to be like that forever. Right. Either. Like because eventually then he'll understand just the like relaxed position of it. Yeah, even compared to my other two, like he's definitely been the most guarded and sensitive, I guess. I don't know if that would be the right word, the sensitive part, as far as the slightest thing. He's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> right. Where the other two, yeah, they were more yeah. relaxed. Sometimes if I need to, like I'll literally close one eye and look at something in the background in comparison to where their body part is. Okay. So I can really tell if they're one that gets super stuck. Yeah. I go to this. Do you have the, who's getting the rope on? Uh, she's supposed to be in there. Did she get the rope on yet? Terry, can you ask her? Yeah. She's good? Okay. Yeah, she's ready. Okay. She can bring them out to where you're standing here. I would also recommend doing this without one that has the popper on the end, or sometimes it works if you tie a popper off. Okay, yeah. At least he's been forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> relaxation on his own, I can kind of get both the cue for it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. 
see if i can get them to unlock this yeah. really quick without me pulling on the rope. there.